Are you aware of the astonishing pace at which technology is advancing in China? Engineers discuss novel innovations, and astonishingly, the very next day, they transform these plans into reality. What's even more remarkable is that some of these technological breakthroughs are not only revolutionizing the lives of the Chinese population, but also exerting a positive influence on a global scale. China has recently undertaken yet another project of this nature, poised to leave a lasting imprint on the world. Meanwhile, as China received accolades from experts, the Western world initiated a wave of criticism. However, their double standards were laid bare when they began emulating China's practices. Once quick to label China as imitative, they now find themselves adopting similar approaches. Additionally, we will shed light on the contrasting hypocrisy prevalent in the Western world concerning this endeavor. Let's get started. Attaining carbon neutrality stands as an aspirational goal pursued by nations worldwide, driven by the imperative of mitigating the health risks associated with carbon emissions. With this understanding in mind, let's seamlessly transition to the central theme of our current video. When it comes to curtailing carbon emissions, a singular step reigns supreme above all others. The critical task of pinpointing the foremost catalysts that accelerate the release of carbon into the atmosphere. Both fuel and energy consumption span a multitude of applications, inevitably contributing to carbon emissions in the atmosphere. However, for a nation committed to curbing carbon output, a pivotal endeavor involves identifying the specific sectors responsible for the predominant share of these emissions. The graph we are about to explore serves as an illuminating tool to discern the primary contributor to carbon emission levels. This is a knowledge that is widely acknowledged by most countries striving to address environmental concerns. The understanding that industries, domestic usage, transportation and agriculture are the primary sources of carbon emissions is a well-established consensus. Yet the complexity of effectively mitigating carbon emissions goes beyond these basic statistics. The reason becomes apparent upon closer examination. If a country were to focus its efforts on curtailing emissions from a single sector, the formidable challenge lies in the time and dedication required for tangible results. Transforming a sector's practices, technologies, and infrastructure to significantly reduce its carbon footprint demands a prolonged and intricate process that spans years of persistent commitment. The time-intensive nature of this endeavor is driven by several factors. Firstly, finding and implementing alternative energy sources to replace fossil fuels requires extensive research, development, and infrastructure changes, which naturally takes time. Secondly, regulating and influencing a diverse range of industries, including government, private, and local enterprises, involves complex negotiations, policy adjustments, and enforcement measures. Lastly, the need to navigate varying operational dynamics, regulatory frameworks, and socioeconomic considerations further contributes to the gradual pace of achieving significant carbon emission reductions in a particular sector. This comprehensive and multifaceted approach coupled with the necessity for careful planning and execution, collectively underscores why it takes years to effectively address carbon emissions within an industry. Therefore, managing all of these will require a significant amount of time. Moreover, if the government discovers a substitute fuel and begins its implementation within its sectors, there exists a strong likelihood of resistance from the private industry. This resistance is likely to stem from cost considerations as the alternative fuel source is expected to be considerably pricier compared to conventional fossil fuels. Given the prevailing statistics, the prospects seem discouraging. This sentiment is echoed by Bill Gates, who categorizes such aspirations as mere fairy tales. This perspective provides insight into the viewpoint of prominent figures regarding this significant ecological challenge. Consequently, it becomes evident that achieving carbon neutrality in the United States is not an imminent reality. However, China's approach presents a contrasting narrative. The country has identified a more expedient route to curbing its carbon emissions, a path that doesn't entail a century-long endeavor. Notably, China has taken a unique route by embracing hydrogen fuel as an alternative energy source, setting it apart from other nations. Our team has also produced a dedicated video elaborating on this subject. Furthermore, China's initial stride toward carbon emissions reduction centers on the adoption of alternative fuels for transportation. 
Transportation accounts for over 27% of carbon emissions, and addressing this aspect could potentially resolve a substantial portion of the issue. The pivotal question now is how China intends to achieve this significant reduction. Before we delve deeper into this topic, I'd like to ask, are you finding the video engaging and informative? If so, please consider showing your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. By doing so, you'll gain access to more insightful content exploring China's development, influence, and global impact. Let us proceed at this moment. How might China achieve this when other nations struggle to curtail carbon emissions from their transportation sectors? Trains constitute the predominant mode of travel in China, with a majority of individuals opting for train journeys over car travel due to the remarkable convenience they offer. This unique circumstance places China in a favorable position to effectively manage and mitigate carbon emissions. It's because the trains are under government control. It won't need to limit any private sector for now. China must implement the decisions and no one will stand against them. Now the question is, how will China stop carbon emissions in transportation? We all know that China's technology is beyond imagination. Every single day, Many new developments are being introduced. And for China, doing crazily amazing projects has become child's play. And this time, China has once again shocked everyone by making a hydrogen energy train. This is the first fastest hydrogen energy train that can travel at 160 kilometers per hour. The train was launched in January 2023 in Chengdu. CRRC, the Changchun Railway Vehicles, and the Chengdu Rail Transit Group made the train. The train completely travels on hydrogen power. In its engine, the hydrogen reacts with an oxygen atom and emits only water. The carbon emission of this train is zero and causes no environmental hazard. The electrochemical reaction of hydrogen and oxygen produces energy in hydrogen fuel cells. The reaction process is also quite stable, and it also does not produce a lot of heat. The battery life of this train is 600 kilometers. In a single day, this train can travel 311 miles and this single train will cut 10 000 kilograms of carbon emissions annually. This train is a futuristic project that shows how far-sighted China is. Apart from that, after the launch, it is clear that China is working on the zero carbon project very fastly. In a few years, many other trains will also start operating. This will bring China near its goal. As the hydrogen powertrain has become a successful project, China will also start making other hydrogen power vehicles and it will bring us close to the green future everyone hopes for. But it is never possible for China to do a project and not hear criticism from the West. And this time, the West calls the hydrogen-powered train a fool cell. The West media is saying this project is not as useful as it is being shown. They are pointing many fingers at the credibility of hydrogen-powered trains. But with the same keyboard, BBC wrote about how this hydrogen powertrain is a fool model. It also wrote about the UK making this same hydrogen powertrain. The West media proudly highlights many such projects in the West now, but when it's about China, they call it a fool model. The experts say this train will transform transportation. It will limit carbon emissions to a maximum level. And not just that, but many people appreciate China for making this train. But the West is still saying that this train is hyped. But if you look back at some projects China started a few years back, the West had the same reaction. Firstly, they criticize the project, and later they do the same project and try to compete with China. If it's not worth it, then don't you think the West must not make these trains? We leave that up to you to decide whether this project is worth it. Do you think this project will soon decrease China's carbon emissions? Is China close to its 2060 carbon neutrality goal? What are your thoughts on the West's criticism of these trains? Comment right below in the comment section. Do you think China will be the first nation to be carbon natural? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing. Until the next video, stay tuned.